In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the angle of complex numbers and how to apply the formula that we derived in the previous video. And that formula, remember, if we have a complex number z equal to x plus i times y, then the angle theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the imaginary part y divided by the real part x. And this formula generally works fine as long as you're in the first or the fourth quadrants. But if we're in the second or the third quadrants, we need to be a little bit more careful. Essentially, this formula only outputs angles between minus 90 degrees or minus pi over 2 radians all the way to 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. So if we have an angle and we will in this case, in the second quadrant here, then this angle will be greater than pi over two and we need to be a little bit more careful with this formula. So let's start by first plotting this complex number and it has a real part of minus eight and we will use a scale of two for the x values. So this right here will be minus eight and for the y values we can use a normal scale of one so this will be at 3i, so our complex number is right here, and we can draw a line connecting that complex number to the origin, essentially creating the vector for this complex number. If we want, we can draw in the arrowhead. And remember, this vector has a length, a magnitude, also known as the modulus of the complex number, but for this particular problem, we're not concerned with finding that. What we need to find is the angle measured from the positive real axes. And we can call this angle theta, and we will need to measure it in radians. Now, to find this angle theta, we can apply this formula, and then we just need to be a little bit careful. So let's plug in the imaginary part and the real part. We have that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the imaginary part, which is three divided by the real part, which is minus eight. And I should mention that this angle for complex numbers is often called the argument. So you might see this written as the argument of the complex number Z. And at this point, we just need to plug in this formula into our calculator. And we need to be careful since we want the answer in radians. So make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. And when we plug this in, we get that theta is approximately, we'll have to round to the nearest thousandth, minus 0.3587, which means we'll round this to minus 0.359. Now you might notice the issue right away. This angle is essentially below the real axis. And we know that our angle is measuring in the positive direction and it should be bigger than pi over two or 90 degrees. If we want this in degrees, it's about negative 20. But the way to figure out what our angle is, is to add 180 degrees. Now, the way to remember whether or not we are adding or subtracting 180 is by looking at the formulas for the tangent function. We can say that the tangent of the angle is equal to the tangent of pi plus the angle, which is the one that we are using, or this is equal to the tangent of minus pi plus our angle. And if we are in the first or the fourth quadrants, we just use the normal tangent function, but if we are in quadrants two or three, we need to be more careful and use one of these identity functions. And to determine which one to use, we need to plot our point and consider what angle the formula gives us. And by drawing in this angle, which is down here, we can recognize that we need to add to that angle specifically 180 degrees or pi radians to be able to get the angle we want. However, if we were in quadrant three and had some point, let's say down here, when we use this formula, 
we would plug in two negative numbers, they would cancel each other and we would get a positive value which would output an angle up in the first quadrant. But by using the geometry, by understanding where our point is and that its angle should be negative and more negative than minus pi over two, then we can recognize that we have to take our positive angle and subtract pi radians or 180 degrees to get the angle that we're actually looking for. So the general strategy is that we need to plot our point in the complex plane. And once we use the formula, just think it through. If we know that we should get an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees or pi over two radians, then we will have to add from or to the angle we get in the formula. However, if we know that our angle is less than negative 90 degrees or minus pi over two radians, then we know that we will have to subtract from the angle we get in the formula to get the angle that we're looking for. And one final approach is to plot your point, draw this line, and then just construct a right triangle. And with this right triangle, this has length eight, this is length three, we can determine what this angle is, which we can call theta one. And we really need to find theta because we're always measuring from the positive real axes. But if we find this angle, then we can just use geometry. We know that this entire angle is pi radians or 180 degrees. And then we can just subtract off the angle in this right triangle. And what we would be left with is this blue angle theta. So there are many different approaches. We can just construct right triangles or we can use this formula and consider these different identity functions to essentially shift our angle to the appropriate spot in this complex plane.